Um, I always like to just uh, record the talks just to give people a sense and idea. <laughs> I feel like we're watching you in live action right now. What's going yeah, on? Yeah, you guys John? are seeing the real deal. There's a few of you I haven't made it to yet, so I'm trying to get there as fast as I can. Are we going to be able to see live handoff action? Is that what's happening? Oh, you just saw one. I think you. Who did you get to? What's that? Who did you hand it off to? Uh, it was a, it was a, an order uh, for a birthday, uh, not part of the product design group, but, but uh, a, a special order for a birthday. That's so awesome. Yeah. Yeah, I know you offer like handwritten notes as well for a lot of the deliveries that you make. Yeah, we do about um, about fifty percent of our deliveries are gifts, so we have uh, and a handwritten note option. Um, and a lot of people are using it as a way to buy friends around and things like that uh, when you can't go to a bar and do it. So definitely a big part of our service. Yeah, so um, tell, like, tell us about how you got this started. How long has this been going for? Sure. Um, yeah, it was a pretty serendipitous start. Um, I basically uh, was a, you know, figured out on a Sunday night that all bars in New York City were going to be closing. This is, I think, March 15th. And um, basically, I posted on Instagram on my page that I would uh, give people, drive a car, or sorry, give people rides or deliver them cocktails. It's just kind of like throwing out ideas as to ways I could make money and keep busy. And people started asking for drinks. So um, we, we just started delivering them and we just videotaped it and people took photos and shared on their Instagram and uh, uh, kind of turned into a little company. Uh, Danielle is a friend of mine and she had reached out and, uh, and said that she would be interested in helping out with some design, which really took us to the next level. And, um, and then we had a, a Google form that we created basically that, that people can order through. I think some of you guys have seen it. Um, and that kind of essentially made us an official business. So we launched a Instagram page and, and the rest is history, I guess. So we're, we're in our seventh week now. We started the first day of quarantine. So. Wow, and wow. Yeah. you're uh, based out of Bushwick. Did I remember this correctly? Yeah, we're we're Bushwick based, um, and we do we have a few bartenders on staff that do um, like jar pickups. We recycle our jars, and then we hire bartenders to do like our emails. So if you guys have ordered today, you got an email from Blake and Holly, who are out of work bartenders that can sort of do our like uh, emailing and things like that. Cool. Um, I know we have uh, somebody who raised their hand. Uh, Vanzad has a question for you. Vanzad, do you mind unmuting and asking any questions? Yeah, yeah. Um, John, nice to meet you. Thanks for delivering the cocktail. Um, You're yeah, I'm just on my girlfriend's account. Reagan's not my name. My <laughs> question is, what is the most amount of alcohol you've had in your car at one time during these seven weeks? Oh, um, I mean, the liquor store runs are pretty big, <laughs> um, but for deliveries, uh, uh, you know, tonight's a pretty big night. We have, we're doing 29 deliveries today, um, and that's throughout the whole city, uh, and that's going to, you know, probably be up to 100, maybe 120 cocktails, so that's, that's usually, like, that's a busy night. Uh, Friday nights are our, our busiest night of the week, and we're usually around between 20 and 25 deliveries. So that's about it. And you, like, it's it's totally legal, right? Like, it's like if, it? you know, if you have like closed the lids on the cocktails, you can drive around with them, right? Yeah, it's all about having a liquor license in the car. Um, and so we partnered with we partnered with a bar to make sure that we are you know at least have even though I don't have an operating liquor license or delivering them uh, under the guise of legality. Mm. Um, but but uh, closed seal is part of the law as well. Um, and since we're mason jars, the mason jars are kind of dual functioning because you can, um, 
shake the drinks in them as well. So you can just add ice to the, to the jar and shake them up rather than having to have like a bar, a bar, bar kit, like a shaker tin and stuff. So yeah, those totally follow the rules. Yeah, well done. It's creative and like, yeah, well done. Way to make the most of the situation. Thank you. And Bandad, I'm going to put you on the spot for a second there. How <laughs> well, you should be used to this. You're actually going to be giving a workshop for us um, in two weeks. So you're very used to public speaking, I know. Yeah, yeah. Uh, do you want me to like say something specifically or just like talk oh, about it? No, day? I was just curious to see. Uh, oh, I, I don't have the pleasure of actually seeing the note. Do you have the note on hand with you? And oh, can you yes. show it to us? Um, Hey, give me one second. I'll get both the cocktails. Yeah, sure. And John, Daniel is also on the line at the moment right now. So, oh, wow. yeah, like, um, here are the two cocktails we got. Uh, the Cinco Especial with daiquiris. So very nice touch writing on the, on the uh, little mason jars. And then got a handwritten note very thoughtful. Zanda, we're super excited to see you at happy hour later. Cheers to the day we can be together again. Uh, yeah, so very, very thoughtful. Thank you very much. Um, and then a little notepad too, some like swag. Like, do some, uh, I guess, like brainstorming on other cocktails and stuff. So it was awesome. Love it. Yeah, and I definitely need to shout out my girlfriend. She has the penmanship. I definitely do not have the penmanship. I'm not allowed to write any of the notes. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean this in like the least sexist way, but this is definitely a woman's writing. Yeah, totally. Yeah, there's no way. There's no way we would be able to do the notes without her. Or like a man who had like five sisters or something. Like, you know. Right. <laughs> Cool. I'm going to hand it um, over to John. Um, John, do you have uh, anything? Or actually, like, do, does anybody have any questions for John? Cool. Uh, I have a question, actually. Um, have have there been a lot of other services that delivered cocktails before coronavirus? And if so, like, um, how have they influenced you as other services? Because I haven't um, heard of any before this. Yeah, I mean, basically, uh, cocktail delivery, alcohol cocktail delivery is, was illegal up until this shutdown in New York City. Um, and so in, the, in light of the shutdown and sort of the restaurants and bars being affected, um, Governor, Governor Cuomo uh, allowed to go take out, take out alcohol and alcohol cocktail delivery service. So really before this, um, really the only alcohol delivery is like the Drizzly, which is just is basically like a delivery liquor store. So um, we were kind of, believe it or not, because we started so quickly, one of the first people in the company uh, in the city to be doing it because we didn't, a lot of the bars are in on it now and they're sort of, um, you know, they, they offer a little bit of a different product, a different price point, a little less home, like home, homemade type feel. Um, so we it out on our own. Uh, there is, uh, alcohol delivery is a big part of drinking culture in China. So there's a few American bartenders over in China that have been sort of like, taking the lead on showing people what alcohol delivery service can look like. So that's been maybe the closest thing to like something that we've looked to to sort of figure it all out. But uh, it's really been pretty organic and just figuring out what, what works and what doesn't and learning on, as we go. You know, a lot of the customer service stuff is, and the tech stuff is like totally out of my realm because, you know, I'm, I'm used to making drinks all the time. So. So uh, it's been a, definitely a learning curve for myself and a lot of other bars and restaurants. Cool, thanks. Yeah. Uh, do you, John, like, if, what, would you, what do you think will happen once this is all done? Like, do you, do you think there's any chance New York will make, like, maintain looser alcohol laws, kind of become more like Europe and? 
It's a good question. We definitely talk about it a lot as bar folk. Um, we, uh, I think that uh, because this, the restaurant and bar uh, reopening is going to be very gradual, like uh, there'll be probably a 25% capacity to start and then it'll slowly climb up. I think it's probably going to take a year before we're really into full capacity restaurants and bars again. Uh, the, the, the to go and, and uh, delivery stuff, I think, will stay. Uh, it'll be interesting to see if it continues to stay. I mean, a, a lot of the business, a lot of the businesses are finding ways to make it work, and I think that restaurant and bar culture is going to change because of this forever a little bit. So I, I wouldn't be surprised if it stayed, but um, I don't think that like takeout alcohol windows will be allowed. I don't think drinking in the street or in the sidewalk will be allowed in New York City. We've talked a lot about that and uh, like just the sheer policing of people, I think, with people drinking in the street would be a lot of work for the city. So we, I, I don't think that that will stay, but uh, the, I, I think the deliveries might stay. Cool. All right, cool. Well, John, I know you're super busy tonight. Um, if nobody yeah, I'm, a, I'm about to do, yeah, I'm about to do another delivery. Where are you going to do your delivery? <laughs> we lost John for a second there. I feel like this is like, like taken when like the person's <laughs> going to the apartment and then he gets cut off. John, where are you? John! <laughs> no. <laughs> I love that movie. I also hate that movie. It's like addicting to watch. I think I watched it. I don't even know when it came out. Did it come out 10 years ago or is it more than that? There's a Taken 2 as well. And I, I feel like I watched it, but I can't remember. Yeah, it's been a while. There's a Taken 3 as well. Oh. All right. Well, I think we lost John. He's more than welcome to join back in. Um, but yeah, we have Danielle on the line. Um, Danielle, Hello. where are you at? There you are. Here. How's it going tonight? Good. Cool. Excited to be doing this. This is kind of a, a change up in my in my quarantine routine. So I love it. <laughs> so yeah, we would love to just like see um how do you like did you know John from beforehand? How did you get connected? And like I just personally love the branding that Thank you did for them just like so quickly. Um, would love to see some of your process and if you have anything to share, like feel free to screen share, but if not, we could just kind of all hang out and just chill. Yeah, I have some stuff to show you guys, but um, John and I have been good friends for a few years now. And um, so I'm a freelance graphic designer and I also have been losing work because of this, because I work mainly in the food industry. And so a lot of my clients have been pausing projects because of kind of the state of the world and how they can't operate business. So when John started the quarantine cocktails, I had gotten some with the people I was quarantining with and they were great. And we just wanted to support him and, and, get drinks while we were in this time. And when they first started out, they had, um, they were making the labels out of analog label makers. So I'll share this with you guys. Let's see. Yeah, and a fun fact, um, I used to go to, I, I know that Danielle went to FIT for packaging design. Yes. And it's like a very small, small niche world. Um, and I actually used to go to FIT for packaging design. Um, I didn't end up in that industry, but it was just like really nice to see like a fellow alumni. Yeah, it's, it is a really small niche. Um, I was really surprised to hear you say that. That's amazing. I don't really use Zoom that much, so I'm trying to figure out how to share my screen. So the share screen button is on the bottom in the middle-ish area. Oh, yes, I see it, it now. Like a green button. Right in front of me. All right. Okay. Awesome. We see it. Great. Yes, so when they were first delivering cocktails, 
and came in these little mason jars and then um, John and his girlfriend Tracy were punching the, the labels for all the cocktails out of uh, an old school label maker. And I've always loved the way that looks. So it's like a piece of plastic. And when you punch the letters into them, it, the way that it bends the plastic, it, it makes the type white. So I was really inspired by that, just as them kind of trying to be resourceful and, and starting up this business. And so I was really inspired by that. And so with the logo, I drew a little mason jar with the CBD for COVID as the, as the COVID cocktails, which is what it kind of started out as, and then morphed into the quarantine cocktail delivery. So for all of the, um, the branding materials that I make, I draw little illustrations on my iPad in Procreate. And then I bring it over into Illustrator and add type. And I like the vintage textural aspect of things. So I wanted to go with a, a script font that I've really been a big fan of. It's, um, it's used um, in Wes Anderson's Moonrise Kingdom. It's the font for that movie, if you guys have seen it. And um, the type and lettering designer Jessica Hish designed it. And so I thought it'd be a great opportunity to actually get to use it. And so started working with John because I wanted to keep myself busy and just thought it would be great if when they launched their Instagram, they had some stuff to actually show all the things that they could offer. So did those and then um, started making them posts so that they could promote different specials that they have or how to do the jar, jar return service. And so, yeah, kind of just started off as me being out of work and wanting to keep myself busy and do something fun for a friend. And so every time now that they have like a little special, I'll, I'll do something for them. That's so awesome. So I see like a lot of these things that you're, the quick slides that you're showing us are all static. Are there any other mediums that you work within? Um, so I wanted to play around the idea of having um, more, more like animated GIFs and stuff. So, and I do work a lot in Procreate on the iPad. So, yeah. What did, um... <laughs> um, yeah, does anybody have any questions for Danielle? Uh, yeah, what was, what influenced your color choice and the thinking behind that in general? Um, the color choice, I have always loved this combination of the, of like a pale pink and the red. And because the, the first round of drinks that they deliver, were delivering used this red label, I took the inspiration kind of directly from that with the red and then wanted to have this complimentary pink to go with it. And it kind of just stemmed from there and I, and I wanted to keep it pretty monotone so that I could turn these out pretty quickly. And, and I like the, uh, the kind of like mid century style of illustration where things are angular and aren't perfectly symmetrical. And so that's, yeah, wanted to go from there with that. Cool. Any other questions for Danielle? No, I don't have any questions. I just wanted to say, like, I really like the way that you explain uh, the design. Sounds real artsy and all that. Like, Thanks. you went really deep into explaining the history behind the typography and who designed it. And I thought that was really cool. Thanks. Yeah, I'm, I'm a big type nerd, so. Cool. Any other questions? All right, neat.
Um, Great. Yeah, feel free to stop sharing your screen. All right. Um, yeah, that was just really neat. I think John has probably signed off because um, he's probably still driving and we want him to keep his eyes on the road. Um, <laughs> um, but yeah, I'm, I hope everybody who has ordered a cocktail tonight have actually received their cocktail. Um, they were just like super busy um, for the night. So, um, but yeah, I guess uh, I'm just trying to get a hold of my bearings here. Um, to share my screen again, and then we could all just like hang out together for the rest of the time. Um, but yeah, I sent this out a little bit earlier on. Um, our last meetup um, was a uh, sort of like a recap of a creative virtual gallery tour, which I thought was really neat. So I see like there's some people on um, this video chat right now that are like repeat faces, but um, it was just like really cool how some of the things that, um, especially, it sounds like some of the people on this chain really likes to create. Um, so it's just like pretty neat what came out of like that type of session. Um, they're from Co-Creative Consciousness um, and they do a lot of uh, mindful facilitation. So it was a good uh, experience to have. Um, so that kind of leads us to our next event that we're gonna be having. Uh, which is a workshop with uh, Humor That Works on Thursday, May 21st. I think the Service Design Network um, or a collective is also featuring Vandad as one of their speakers. So um, I think that's like the week before us. Um, but yeah, definitely check it out. I'll send out a link so everybody can go RSVP if they're interested. Um, and with that, I think that's, um, we could just kind of hang out. I'm just curious to see, uh, if everybody actually got all of their cocktails into place and what they look like. So feel free to, um, just turn on your videos. I see Jose is like all happy and grinning because I got him those cocktails. <laughs> it was his birthday last week. Um, so yeah, feel free to just like turn on your video. Um, we miss you guys. We want to see all your faces and hear <laughs> from you and still stay connected. And that's really what we're here to do for everybody. I did, I did get my cocktails. I do have to split in a moment, but I got a, um, let me show you. Oh, I'm spotlighted. How nice. I got a margarita in this nice little jar here. Poured it out of some ice. Um, and the other thing that I ordered on the, on the form was a, a Negroni or a Mezcal Negroni. So another little one in a jar, but comes with a nice little orange peel in a little Ziploc bag. So I can, uh, have my, have my cocktail in a moment. Um, yeah, it was amazing. Delivered in a nice little bag, popped it in the, in the, in the fridge for a minute to cool it down and, and yeah, just poured it over some ice. I'm good to go. Are you gonna light up like a matchstick and get all fancy with like some tricks there? No, there'd be no, there'd be no fancy tricks. Um, but that's a good idea. Uh, no, but I'll, I'll, I'll keep it classy. I'll keep it classy. I'll get it in there and you know, nice. And then, uh, yeah, I'd, I'd love to do this again. I think it's a great idea. I got a nice little handy note too. It's delightful. Yeah, and that Adobe swag. <laughs> Thank you, Adobe. I see John is back on. He's running around. Let's just spotlight him and just watch him run. <laughs> oh, wow. Hey! <laughs> What's really hey, guys. I think, John, were you um, also, were you, like, collaborating with somebody? Um, like, I, I saw, I caught some, like, a quick clip of you making cocktails on, um, on Instagram. Yeah, um, I do work with um a company called cocktail academy i actually have a hat on here cocktail academy um and they have this uh this thing they call night school basically on on the internet on instagram live and uh my role in it sorry the car's beeping is uh macgyver mixology so my sort of, my, every week I come up with different ways of making cocktails in your house with 
different types of tools, like for, you know, if in this case it would be a mason jar, or, you know, weird ingredients to kind of like make be a little bit more accessible to the home bartender. Ooh, I got a question for you. So uh, what kind of special cocktails are you going to come up with next? Do you like have any clues for us? Um, well, it's starting to be, it's starting to be uh, summertime, spring and summertime. So um, I definitely want to start getting into like more of a refreshing realm. Um, so I'm, I'm looking into finding like a cheap soda water delivery to do like a mojito or a Tom Collins or something along those lines. Um, so that's kind of where I'm looking, looking now. Um, but we'll, we'll kind of see as it comes. The, the cool thing about this being a new business is uh, people just request drinks and we see how it works. So like we do a weekend special of Bloody Marys and that all just kind of started with someone asking if we could do a Bloody Mary and, and that's, turned into a whole service that we do on Friday and Saturday night where people get celery and olives and all that and then um, a, a pre-mixed Bloody Mary. Um, so it's gonna kind of, we kind of decide on the drinks as people request things and we see what works and what doesn't work. All right, you heard him. Start putting in your orders, give him ideas. <laughs> Not sure if he can accomplish all of yeah. it. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah, we, we, it's it's great to get feedback. Um, and I'm I'm sorry that there's a few people that I haven't gotten to yet. I'm I'm going uptown now. I'm going to uh, East 95th. Um, if the person's out there, I'm uh, <laughs> I'm headed your way. Cool. Well, hey, how did Danielle do? We're just I'm sorry, I missed it. did I miss Danielle? You did. Um, she was showcasing and just like telling her side of like, you know, how she got involved. Um, yeah. It's like really nice to hear like her inspiration actually came from like the physical world of seeing like that, uh, like that plastic cutter. I don't know what it's called. Like that plastic. Label maker. Yeah, label yeah. maker. Um, so that was like pretty neat to hear. It's a shame. It's a shame that we, uh, I've broken four of those analog label makers in like two weeks. So I, I had to, I had to put it to rest. I have like a little graveyard of them. They, they don't, they aren't built to last, unfortunately. Um, but, when, but uh, Danielle and I are working on some new stickers now. So we'll see if we can get some stickers on the drinks instead of the handwritten tape. Cool. Yeah. Yeah, what's nice about um, this being kind of a, a, a small operation, it's kind of like John is your own personal bartender because they're, you know, the bars and stuff, they'll have their own set cocktail menu and then you can go and, and pick up what you get from them. But because John is a real person right there that you can reach out to, you can say, hey, I, what about doing a mojito or something when it, when it comes? And then he'll say, okay, maybe I can do that. Maybe I can't. Let me try it out. And then maybe you could be the, the you know in the beta stages of getting the first margaritas or um, I mean, yeah. or Bloody Marys, which were delicious. If you're missing brunch cocktails, definitely get the Bloody Marys. Can you do like a mimosa kit? Yeah, we did. We did. Um, we did mimosas um, for one group. They were doing a digital happy hour. The the challenge the challenge with it is, and I, I have to. I've, found a good place to get them, but they have these little champagne split bottles. So before that, we were only really doing it by the bottle, like by the 750 bottle, by a large, large bottle. So um, we were working on a little bit, little like Famosa or Bellini, where it comes with a small little bottle of uh, Prosecco or Cava or what have you, that it can just kind of be made on the spot. Nice. Yeah, I definitely miss being able to be at a bar and like just literally like that that gun that shoots out whatever soda is like magic. Yeah. Whatever it's called. <laughs> I miss that. I miss just like hanging out there and like being around people. Um, because I'm want, not really I, bad I, at making drinks. I have a question for everybody out there. Like, what are your favorite bars? What are the mm -hmm. bars that you guys miss? Cool. 
That's it's tough. So mute. There's a bar in Hoboken called Louise and Jerry's. I live in. I usually live in Hoboken. I'm quarantining here in Manhattan, but I missed that one. It's a small, small bar. Nice atmosphere. What do you like the most about it? Um, it's pretty quiet. Not many TVs. I don't think there are any TVs actually. That might be the best thing. It definitely seems to me like people miss like the com the comfortable bars. The bars where, where they're they maybe know the bartender or they like they they have a group of friends that meets there. Or it's not necessarily like the big fancy fancy spots that people miss. Yeah, I went to a cool bar in Manhattan a couple of months ago. When I was in New York before everything got shut down. And uh, the name of the bar is called Burger Shop Beer. And they serve, like, sliders and stuff. And it's pretty cool. Like, you know, kind of like a homemade White Castle, you know. And <laughs> John, how many more deliveries do you have left? I have this one uptown, and then uh, Caitlin and um, I forget the gentleman's name. I we had, we had a little bit of a mix up on our our route today, so I have to head back to. To get to them, unfortunately, a little late, but um, just two more. And I'll be home. My girlfriend got burritos. I'm very excited to have some dinner. <laughs> nice. Well, I, I want to put my request in for to, for lychee martinis to be considered. Okay, but, lychee martinis? Yes, because I tried to make mine today and it's just not the same. I just, I don't. Oh, first of all, I don't have a shaker. I don't have any of those, like all the all the things. I, I just don't have like um. See, I don't even know what it's called. Like the the jiggers. The jigger, yeah. Yeah, like I I don't have any of that. And the only thing that I had was like some kind of thermal thing, and I was trying to like shake it off. Yeah. Just like so, sir. A good little trick. A good little trick to know is like if you have um measuring spoons. Like like uh, measuring spoons uh, move over to ounces really easily. So like uh, a, a tablespoon is like, I think it's, I think it's a half an ounce is a tablespoon or something like that. Um, so you can, if you have measuring spoons that are, are like, you know, tablespoon, teaspoon, what have you, it's a really easy way to measure properly without um, having a bartender jigger. Mm. Wait, so what are some of like your favorite ingredients? that you like to good, work with? Good question. Um, uh, uh, I mean, at this point, I, you know, I've been bar bartending for nine years, so uh, it's, it's the most exciting thing is when people give you a, uh, a request for something that, and they, that's particular and you get it right. Um, I, I generally like to make really like lighter and refreshing drinks. That's kind of like what I would maybe consider my style. Um, uh, if you guys have ever heard of um, Bar Pisolino in Manhattan, um, I sort of built that program when it opened last year. Um, and that's sort of like aperitivo, daytime drinking Italian style is one of the one of the things that I, I like to do. So I would say that maybe that's kind of where I lean. But at this point, like, it's like it's just making making good drinks and making people happy is is really what what we're look we always looking for you know. Well, bring a lot of smiles to our faces. Just like know that you're doing that every time you're making those deliveries. Could I yeah. ask uh, what your favorite red aperitif is? My favorite red aperitif. Good question. Um. Uh, there, huh? I really like uh, if you guys. I mean, they 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 all have different different functions, but um, it depends on what I'm using it for. So there's one called Capaletti, 
that uh, r really mixes really well. It's not so bitter, and it goes really nice with like like nutty bitter and bitter flavors. Um, it's uh, it's wine based, so it it, it doesn't have um, it doesn't have any like any spirit in it, so it's a little bit lower proof. I mean, Campari is obviously the classic one. Um, I really like uh, the, the Four Safe Bitters, which is a Brooklyn-based one. That's a cool, that's a cool naturally made one. That's uh, it's colored with hibiscus rather than uh, like coloring or um, like the little ch ch they're called cochineal bugs. So those are little little ladybugs that are colored, used to color red bitters. Uh, those are some good ones. Um, I'd probably say those are my favorite, uh, but with the aperitivo drinks, it's all about um, matching it with the right vermouth. So like some some more bitter com things like Campari go really well with like maybe a less bitter vermouth. So I think it just depends on the, the function. I don't know if I'm getting too too technical and nerdy for you guys, but. That was awesome. Thanks. Nah, yeah, you know a lot about drinks. I had no yeah. idea what he was talking about. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I mean, um, I like to take like the rest of the time. Like John, you could feel free to stay on, of course. Um, but I like to take just like the rest of the time, just do like a round of intros for like the people who are left here. Um, yeah, and then just yeah, just hang out, see what you're all about. Hanging out. I'm gonna take you guys on a on my delivery. Yeah. Delivery. Wait, look, who are you? Are you are you going to like a BKP person next? Yeah. Um. Hold on. Let me see the name. I feel like now it's like now I feel like I'm in a movie and like now we have to watch like what happened. <laughs> yeah, we're going to Michael's. Okay, like, I'm on the sixth floor, so I'm gonna come down right now because I have to. Okay, great. Have a ways to go, so I'll I'll come down now. Awesome. See you soon, Michael. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> That's so funny. This is amazing. On the bonus treat, you get to see you live. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm like, I, I, I want to know, um, like, what, I guess, do you, do you, um, like, do you deliver it to Michael, or does he come downstairs to meet you? Um, we we allow um, we we offer delivery instructions. So, like, if people have particular things that we need to know, uh, everyone kind of operates a little bit differently. Generally speaking, we ask people come down to the street level. Um, to receive cocktails, uh, we don't. We try to avoid going into too many buildings, just because you know it's not necessarily the right move. Um, but uh, hold on one sec. But yeah, so it depends. It's like sometimes with a doorman, you can just leave it with a doorman. Uh, it, it all just depends on what the particular situation is. But as a as a, a rule that can be broken at times, we try not to go into the buildings. I'm just, I'm really excited to see <laughs> Michael make it. <laughs> Is he there? Uh, I just, I'm just pulling up now. So. <laughs> I just okay, think here we are. like a very giddy person, like jumping around. Here he is. I'll, I'll let me flip it. Oh my God. <laughs> yeah. Okay, one sec, guys. Now we got a car behind me. Hey, Michael. You guys should sell the rights to this to Netflix. That'll be very entertaining. The monetization potential is real. Yeah. 
Now I'm just like, what are they seeing? <laughs> How'd we do? Glorious. Are you live? Yeah, success. <laughs> We have to watch Mike. when Michael comes back into his apartment. Yeah, Michael said he'll see us. He'll see you guys on the stream. <laughs> was that like dramatic music? I thought I thought I was gonna listen to Old Dirty Bastard. I don't know why. <laughs> <laughs> All right, now we're going to now we're going to Caitlin's house. Oh, <laughs> yeah, Caitlin. Um, Caitlin actually works for Adobe. Um, oh. she, uh, was, she was like one of the mentors for our last hackathon event. Um, and I think Randy was there too. Yeah. Randy just said that, uh, she was the mentor for, um, one of the, one of the people's groups. So it was nice to see that Michael, you know, like he put on his mask and everything. <laughs> Oh yeah. You should have timed it to see how long it takes for Michael to go up six floors. <laughs> did he take the elevator <laughs> or did he run? <laughs> no, I, I think we I think we made history tonight. You know, there was, you know, one person in two different feeds. <laughs> There is like something about just like, like even for me, like um, one of my friends actually sent a postcard to me. Hey, oh. there he is. Hey. <laughs> what up, Michael? What you got there? I got daiquiri, <laughs> a Negroni. I'm a bit out of breath because I just went up six flights. <laughs> yes, we were asking that. Did you? Oh, you got the Baja Blast. Mm -hmm. Okay, you're like not kidding here. And this. Oh, the Cinco Special. <laughs> nice. And the note. And the orange peel. <laughs> wow. You are stocked up on provisions, Michael. Yeah, how, how much is it all that close? Are you are Mike? you alone? I don't know, thirty-two or something. Are, are my you... girlfriend's here, but she's studying. Oh, gotcha! I was like, you got. Are you, are you gonna drink all of that? No. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, this man means business. Hey, Michael. Hey. I forgot to give you your Adobe swag. I'm, I just turned around. Oh, I'm okay. Leave, I'll leave it at the bottom of the stairs. Sure. Uh, Sorry about that. No, that's okay. I'll, I'll bear it down. No, no, don't, don't, don't rush. I'll just buzz me and I'll leave it down and you can, you can grab it when you're ready. Okay, cool. I'll buzz you in. Yeah, I don't, I don't want to go up and down the stairs again. <laughs> yeah, I don't blame I'll you. Wait, I don't blame I'll you. wait. I'll do it later. <laughs> My exercise. <laughs> Yeah, we we wanted to know if you uh, took the elevator or like the stairs. No, we don't have an elevator. <laughs> oh man, that's rough. So there's ch two Johns on this call. Um, John Martinez, like, where where are you from? Hey, what's up? Yeah, um, I live in Orlando. I'm originally from New York, but I've been living in Orlando for about 10 years. Uh, cool. What part of New York were you, were you originally from? I grew up in the Bronx, but, you know, I've been around every borough. I've been in Manhattan, Queens, you know, Brooklyn, everywhere, you know. Yeah. Yeah, New York is a place where you have to go everywhere. 
Oh, what was that? That's uh, what's up? Yeah. <laughs> it's John getting buzzed in. <laughs> you guys do virtual events like this often? Um, we've been doing them more often uh, during the quarantine. So before quarantine, um, you guys weren't doing any virtual events? We, we weren't. Um, we mostly just hosted in-person events. We did them um, um, once a month, and we would alternate between a social, uh, social casual gathering at uh, usually like a bar, um, to every other month would then be like a speaker, more educational, uh, professional okay. networking event. Yeah. Nice. Cool. Uh, you know, the quarantine has changed. You know how everything and everyone operates. So who knows? Like we success in um as well. <laughs> oh the audio <laughs> went out a little bit. Brian, you sound like you're under the sea. You know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's what it sounds like. I can hear myself yeah. It sounds like that to everybody on the call or is it just me? It's just you. No, I'm just kidding. It, it, it's definitely Brian. <laughs> is this better? Hello? Yeah. Hello? It's much better. Okay, okay cool. <laughs> yeah, welcome back to the surface, Brian. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> and hard to uh, breathe. <laughs> Look what the sword dragged in. <laughs> <laughs> nah, I'm just kidding. That was a good one. <laughs> Um, no, I just switched my inputs from my headphones to my to my my computer. So now it's using uh -oh. my computer microphone. Nice. You know, I'm I'm glad y'all do this uh, virtual event. I would have never been able to, uh, you know, plug in really from Orlando. You know, mm -hmm. I was just lo looking, trying to see on Meetup.com what's going on in New York. You know, because I want to be able to relocate, but. Obviously, everything is crazy right now. Of all places to want to relocate, to go to New York, where you have the most coronavirus cases. <laughs> but, you know, despite all of that, I still want to go back, you know. So I'm glad I signed up for this and y'all doing virtual events. Um, I've been doing remote for a long time, so I'm glad that things are, are going to be, you know, more remote. People are more open to it. They don't really have a choice but to be open to it now, you know. Yeah, um, 